Welcome to Trading Lounge and the S&P 500 for the 30th of May. And start, starting on the monthly here to have a look at the bigger picture here. We were looking at, this is wave 3 over here, an A and a B and a C for wave 4 here. In a lot of cases here, this market here and some other uh, indices never made a new low uh, in this space here, like the DAX. Uh, and maybe some of the other US indices as well. Uh, however, we're looking up at one and two and all the way up here for three, and then an A and a B and a C here for an expanded flat, and then we're looking for five waves to take us into new highs. The market has pulled back to the 38.2% retracement level, so if I take it from wave two here, and the thing is, is to take it to the wave three top here, and then that will leave us at the 38.2% retracement level uh, here. So really, all in all, that's quite a nice, very simple expanded flat correction. And what we're looking at now is the current move up through here. In most indices, we can see it as an impulse wave rather than a corrective wave. So moving into the weekly chart uh, here, we can view this first move up here as uh, wave one and then pulling back for wave two in three waves and then moving up here further. So yes, there will be resistance at the major trading level at 3000 here. And we can see that in terms of breaking that wave one down here into five waves of one and two and three and four and coming up into the fifth wave here. So our job today is to pick the, pick the top area here and look by uh, do, doing that by looking at the five wave structure within this space uh, here. This area over here, uh, and of course the, the number itself, the price point, uh, is the, uh, you know, the, the resistance here psychologically. And also, um, you know, there's orders placed at this level here and they need to be resolved as well. So drilling into the four hour chart uh, here, looking at our wave structure to the upside, we can look at this as wave one, ABC for two here, and then one and two and three and four and five here for the third wave, the fourth wave that also pulled back to the 38.2% retracement level. And this last leg here, this is where the S&P uh, started to lead the race um, over the NASDAQ that was leading to the upside. Uh, we do have a bit of a problem with the NASDAQ because, and I'll just point it out here, because this wave four here that we're looking for here, on the uh, NASDAQ, it overlapped the wave one here. So that causes a little bit of a problem. Um, I, I mean, I'll point it out and we can look at an alternative count for that, but uh, I'm going to base it off this, I'm going to base the NASDAQ count off this here, even though it has got an overlapping wave structure, and we'll look at that. So from wave four here to wave five here, of wave one here, we're looking for five waves, so one and two and three and four here, and then five here. So from this wave four, we need to count five waves into this one, uh, into this fifth minute wave here. So let's go in a bit closer and look at that. So here are our five waves a little bit clearer here in terms of one and two here and three here and four here. And we're looking for wave five to the upside. So we will go to the 15 minute chart and check that out. But basically wave one here, wave two here, uh, wave three coming into this space, wave four and wave five moving it higher. And let's go to the 15 minute chart here next. So from the blue wave four, we were looking at wave one and two here, and then we're looking up for wave three. Now, um, this wave four here, I think, I think we may end up having to, I mean, this market is, this market will want to test the 3000. That's, that's the psychological finishing line for this. And I thought that we would get a wave four here based on one and two here. And yeah, no, it's got to go a little bit higher here further. I thought we would pull back. I knew we were going higher, but I just thought we'd pull back here one more move here and then up here. So I'll probably have to reassess this wave count here 
and we'll probably look at we'll probably have to look at things Um, a little bit differently, we'll prob probably have to put wave three up here and wave four here and move this up here, out of the way here. Um, just let me, th yeah, that's probably about right. I'm thinking one and two in here, and then th I, I was thinking three, four and five here for the third wave, that's what I was thinking just here for a moment and then looking for the wave four to pull back um, but I'm not seeing any I'm not seeing a pullback into into the 38.2 percent retracement level roughly um, the 2930 area here I would imagine and I'm not seeing I'm not seeing that unless that one move here is that but I doubt it that looks not Okay, I've got it now. I can see it. It's funny because when you're doing the count, sometimes you scratch your head, and then suddenly it'll sort of jump out on you. So that's basically um, top of wave three here. That's an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here. So that's the corrective move here. So we've still got one and two and three and four and five. Yeah, so that's right. Uh, and then the ABC across here that can pull back 38.2%. So what you need to do is you need to take this low here. And when you start to see it correct, then you'll be able to figure out the 38.2% retracement level. And then we can move up from that point there. Just move that over here a bit. Yeah, just got a little bit strange there. I should pull that apart on the tick chart, but um, no need. Um, yeah, look, so that's it, you know, that's the journey that we've been, we've been on. It's been quite interesting um, in that, you know, when we come back to the daily chart, he's been some fantastic sort of emotional stories in, in all of this. And, and I think it's really good to reflect back on your own, on, on your own, um, your own thoughts and um, emotions within all of this here, you know, um, you know, how did you feel when the market was, was down here? And, and you know, um, and, and, and also, you know, through here, once it got support on, on here, I mean, we went through all of this before um, over in this move over here. We, we went, I was quite lucky, really. I mean, I've been around the market since 80, 1982, so I've, I've seen a bit, but um, obviously, as you get older, you sort of forget things and remember things. But in this case, it was a fresh memory because what we did over here was exactly what we did over here. And I remember over here, when we're counting down here, you know, all the big top Elliott Wave firms were saying we're going to come down here and so on. And they said the same thing over here as well. I think we were like one of the few that got the turn here. And we and we were one of the few that got the turn here. Um, but this one, getting this one here, that helped us get this one here to do all the right things at the right time, and that's what we did. But I think it's you know basically um, you know when the market is this far down, it's it's it's. It's, it's a little bit tricky to stay logical within all of this. You know, you can read all the quotes and things, you know, like, you know, buy when there's blood on the streets, unfortunately, and all these sorts of things. Um, but when you're sort of there at the time, you, you kind of find yourself in the same emotional space as the market. That's the tricky thing that you need to um, uh, resolve and I do that by try to thinking logically. I try to follow the wave counts. Um, and sure, a lot of many, everybody's got their own wave count, which makes it really, you know, it sucks a little bit. Um, but the trading levels was really good for us because they really grounded us and made us, you know, we were long in here. You know, we, we, when all this came up to this point here, we just steadily waited for this setup over this side or the short over this side. We may have made a little bit of money in it, we may have lost a little bit of money in it, but in the bigger picture of all of this occurring here when this was coming up here, we were just doing the same thing that we're going to do over here. We just had to wait for it to find support um, on this level over here. So coming off these tops here, 
whoops, coming off these tops here, we were able to be long here where most other people were panicking because we used the trading levels, <clears throat> used the price as support and resistance. So that's really helped us here. And we know too, coming up into this space here, we're at this level here now. And even though once this structure here finishes, then we're going to be pulling back to the 50, 60% retracement level. It doesn't have to pull back down this far, but that's where we'll put it to start with. And then we'll just look at the structure. Now with a wave two structure here, we would look for five waves here, three waves here and five waves here. Now this first move down the A wave here, that's going to be sharper, right, and faster than this leg here. And, you know, the other question is, is that can we get a, you know, when we look at all the counts, can we get a correction? Can this be a corrective rally up here? I guess it could. It could be in the terms of um, an A wave up here, a B wave here, and a C wave up here, and then crash that way. So that's possible because we've got that five waves there. Is there any way we can get a corrective move out of this? Well, there is actually, and we'd been looking at this before. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> just on a two hour chart here. So it's looking at this instead of wave one here, it looks at it as an A wave here, and then an A and a B and a C. But instead of putting it onto this low here, because when we count it up, up here before we count this as one here and two here, and three here and four here, and then five up through here. But in this case here, we can count this here. If we use this low here, we can count as one and two and three and four here. And then our five wave structure moving up here to the 3000. So um, it is possible. Um, this trend did have a few uh, problems with it. Um, and this is also a possibility. So I'm st we can't throw this one out just yet. So, but we're, but we're you know, we're, um, you know, well, I'm in Australia and we use CFDs to trade things. So we, you, because we have to pay overnight financing on these CFDs, which is quite high and it compounds every day because they calculate it every day, you wouldn't want to be holding a position too long in, in, uh, in, in a CFD where a futures contract, of course, is just, is, is just got its expiry, but the futures contracts are <clears throat> more expensive to buy. Um, but they're cheaper to execute in the market and they don't have any interest um, uh, compounding on them. So, <clears throat> but CFDs have taken the, the world by storm in a way, uh, except America where they don't, <laughs> the options people don't allow them to be in there. Uh, fair enough. But um, let's move over to the NASDAQ here. Not, not, not a different story really. The NASDAQ... Um, held better um, on, on its, didn't pull down as much on its low here as the S&P. So it's also um, trading a little bit higher than the uh, S&P. But the same thing occurs here as well. We have one and two here and three here and four here and going up for five here. So once this is completed, we'll see this pullback uh, into this space here. And we're on the same pathway here. So wave one and two over here, one, two, three, four, five, the third wave here, the fourth wave here. And then we. this is one of the problems I've mentioned before here where we have this wave four here that actually pulled back 61.8% here. So it's overlapped this here. It had a bit of a sharp move here. So obviously a news event and it's created that, um, that problem there. Now, if I was counting that properly, we would, and I'll, we'll just go over this. We've got a little bit of time here, and I think it's good to uh, look at these things. I mean, but what I'm going to show you now won't line up with the S&P. I don't think so anyway. So <clears throat> in this case here, the way to count this correctly would be by pushing these up here and having a higher move up here. But I don't want to go too far above the 900 here at 9,000, <clears> which is a medium level, and the s and at 3,000 as well. So we need to be a bit mindful um, of that. But 
it could be counted like this here. We just need to see how that this wave's going to go. See, we've got one and two and three in here, so then we'll get four in here. We, you know, I think it's good to just sort of look at these things here, and then wave four and then wave five pushing up here higher. Will it go all that way up there? I don't know, but <clears throat> probably not. Um, but that would be the sort of alternative count there. So I'll just grab that three back here and put that here and that four here and five. But I just thought I'd show that because we do have that overlapping wave structure. So this can be counted as wave one here and back for wave two here and then going up for wave three. So we'll just keep an eye on this if it keeps keeps moving up. And um, yeah, if you want to go for something like this and you you know don't know where to put the stop, well, you can keep it under the daily bar or the four hour bar here. I'd probably go for the daily bar at least. But um, yeah, it's going to stick to this number here. And group one here, the 10, 20 and 30, its objective will be to slow the move down up to here and then, you know, it'll be pulled back down to, to this here. So um, yeah, the one, two and three, when you're moving up into the first high above the level, the, these kind of, the, the kind of like, the stops in a way they you know slow the market down and bring it back but anyway we'll just leave this here as an alternative count um coming to the hourly chart here if we count it in the same line as the s p then we'll go one and two here and one two three four five and three and four here and then look at this as one and two and the third wave moving up wherever that finishes and wave four and wave five so we could put in group one above this level which should be 100, 200, 300. And then we've got the midpoint up here at 500, up here somewhere at 500. Not that we need to worry about that at the moment, but just doing it here. So the Fibonacci number is 1, 2, 3, 5, and then 8 there. Um, so um, that's it. Yeah, <clears throat> we're nearly at the nearly at the top has been quite a journey lots of emotional events and and i think overall we've done really quite well in trading this up here as well i think we've um we've taken our fair share of the pie moving up here so i'm pretty pretty chuffed about all of that Alrighty, thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support